Hello YouTube, so this is the second part of my series on how to hatch and raise non-annual killifish species. And these are the two batches of killifish that I received, uh, you know, about about a week ago, I could say. And um, I did have some good success rate with both of them. Um, I got a little bit more hatchings in this tank. Uh, that's the species. Uh, but you can't really see any of the fry, just too much of a glare. But uh, I did capture one of the the species as <laughs> I just cannot pronounce them and it and it's right in here it's over there it's quite small and I just wanted to show you that um, as always label your container and keep it in a small container if you have only a few fry keep it in quite a small container so like because that in the beginning of their life cycle or well, life stage uh, they can't really move they could move but they just as seen over there, they don't really move that much, so uh, they won't really travel too far to get their food. So try to make them uh, try to make their life a little bit easier by making the tank smaller, so the food could, uh, like for example, baby brine shrimp and buckworm, so they don't have to travel and capture it, um, hunt it down too far. I hope you understand what I mean, because um, they're going to waste a lot of valuable energy which you need to grow. So they'll just be growing a little bit slower and uh, it's not really fun because the first time I did hatch my other killifish I did use a little bit bigger container I didn't have any debts but they just didn't grow that much but with other of my other non-annual species they did grow a little faster once I uh, made the aquarium uh, well the container size a little bit smaller so I think that's a really important thing to do and you have to add some moss that's I think that's pretty logical you know they need a little bit hiding spot uh, they are a little bit nervous right now, so that's one of them. I'm going to capture a little bit more today, but uh, always separate your containers. I usually put a lid on just in case, not really tightly, just in case someone, um, you know, someone bumps into the table or something like that, that the fry don't mix up. Try to keep them as far as possible. Like, for example, don't put this container right over here where it could fall in either one of the aquariums, which is not going to be fun because uh, you're not going to be sure which fry is which only if the males and usually the females always look the same so that's just going to mess up all your genetic uh, makeup of the killifish species which is not fun to have in your home um, but that's it as I said label always your containers uh, I label all mines over there well like for example I didn't label that one but that's them I know which species this is. Oh yeah, I did label it. Never mind. Only have one for that, but uh, either way, thanks for watching, guys. And tell me what you think. And if you didn't see part one of the series, uh, please check it out. And I hope you, hopefully, you're gonna keep on watching it. Thanks, guys.